Want to know how humanity arrived in North America before the Ice Age? What if truth isn't as easy as crossing a land bridge? Join us as we discover the first Americans' amazing origins with a daring seaman traveling dangerous oceans, or do they take a road we don't understand? The answers may revolutionize all you know about our forefathers. How humans arrived in the Western Hemisphere divides U.S. archaeology and popular opinion. Modern genetic and archaeological data can overwhelm and contradict scientists. These data originate from new archaeological digs and new methods for reanalyzing existing sites and objects. Sources include newly sequenced genomes from ancient peoples and their descendants and current modeling older genomic data. New data can outstrip efforts to create rational, tested models. Where the Americas settled 100,000, 30,000, 15,000, or 13,000 years ago, they arrived by boat or land, ancient Native Americans, one or many. These questions may explain human evolution. How anatomically modern Homo sapiens and others arrived in the Americas last is unknown. These ancient movements hint at the hardships ancient peoples endured during the last glacial maximum, a prolonged period of cold and aridity when animals, plants, and humans flood to environmental refugia. For thousands of years, we survived Ice Age. How? Environmental conditions cause what biological and technical adaptations? These questions grip the public and puzzle ancient life researchers. Indigenous descendants value these first peoples of the Americas' stories for various reasons. To accommodate non-native narratives, governments, media, and corporations in North and South America have ignored or destroyed their deep connections to the land. Indigenous communities and individuals have suffered from the historical exclusion of indigenous peoples from ancestor and land research decisions. Stories are more respectful and truthful when native scientists and community members participate in research. Archaeology shows indigenous Americans lived 15,000 years ago. When humans came as disputed by scientists, archaeologists cite flaked stones in Chicuí Cave in Mexico, bones with cut marks in Uruguay, flaked stones in Brazil, and fractured mastodon bones in California from 130,000 years ago to support their claim. Strongly oppose all assertions. A valid archaeological site contains apparent human activity, can be properly dated, and is in an undisturbed geological setting. Wood charcoal particles from a hearth with charred animal bone fragments and stone tool fragments were dated to 13,485 to 13,365 years ago at Dry Creek in eastern Beringia, near Denali National Park in Alaska. Sharpened blades, flakes, end scrapers, and their byproducts in regular controlled fires to cook animal bones demonstrate human presence. The full stratigraphy and many hearth radiocarbon dates reveal when this area was used. This is undisputed by archaeologists. Early sites cited above may not satisfy that criterion since opponents believe the stone artifacts and butchering markings might be natural phenomena or modern construction equipment. Physical proof of 15,500-year-old human life in the Americas is lacking. Archaeologists found 23,000 to 21,000-year-old footprints at White Sands National Park in New Mexico in 2021, proving human presence. White Sands Locality 2 was another lake's coast. Visitors included people and animals for over 2,000 years. While walking down the muddy surface, their feet pushed ditch grass seeds into the ground, generating an organic residue that archaeologists can use for carbon dating. Some archaeologists have criticized the dating methods, but there is universal agreement that human traces with extinct wildlife date these to the end of the Pleistocene. If a find is confirmed, physical evidence of human presence in the Americas during the LGM would shift the chronology of the earliest migrations to before 25,000 years ago. When European settlers and explorers encountered the Native Americans, they tried to fit their life within a biblical worldview. For settlers, ideological convenience, the first peoples who built the Americas' spectacular earthworks, monuments, temples, and pyramids were recast as a lost tribe of Israelites, Irish sailors, or Vikings. The monuments and fortresses of an unknown civilization strewn across the West commemorate a once powerful race that was defeated by barbarian tribes. As archaeology became scientific, professionals rejected the mound builder myth. In the late 19th century, the U.S. government funded a North American mound excavation to locate founders. Researchers found that indigenous Americans, not some lost race, built the mounds. The Bureau of Ethnology's 12th Annual Report to the Smithsonian Institution Secretary, 1890-91, kickstarted archaeology. Ancient, cultural, and biological evidence suggested Native Americans' ancestors traversed Siberia and Alaska via land. Bridge. Migration start date was uncertain. Poorly understood geological and cultural chronologies made it difficult to address. In 1946, scientists established radiometric dating, but model disputes hampered it. 
Hunter-gatherers crossed the Bering Land Bridge from Siberia to North America in the Clovis First Scenario. A human-made spear point unearthed in Folsom, New Mexico in 1927 changed everything. Pleistocene bison remains were found with the spear point. Even without radiometric dating, researchers knew a human item implanted in an extinct animal had delayed our arrival in the Americas. This marked another fundamental shift in Western Hemisphere human origins study. Such items helped archaeologists reconstruct history. Clovis first dominated the field for decades. Technologies found in a Pleistocene dead site near Clovis, New Mexico in 1929 inspired its name. A thin lance-shaped projectile point with a single, long flake removed at its base called a flute, the Clovis point is unique to North America. Around 13,400 years ago after the LGM, it expanded across the continent. Many archaeologists thought Clovis tools were proof of the earliest Americans due to their sudden appearance and dispersion and the paucity of previous sites. According to Clovis first, a small group of Siberian hunter-gatherers crossed the Bering Land Bridge to North America. They traveled south after warmer temperatures created an ice-free corridor in the eastern Canadian Rocky Mountains. The people soon migrated across continents, hiding their new projectile points in prey or specific spots. Evidence of early humans in the Americas contradicted the Clovis first concept. The archaeological site of Monte Verde in Chile indicates human existence over 1,000 years before Clovis. Genetics undermined the Clovis first concept as it matured. Sequencing DNA and assuming DNA bases change at a consistent rate let geneticists estimate when distinct groups last shared an ancestor. Genetic studies found a Native American last common ancestor 15,000 to 30,000 years ago, 2,000 to 17,000 years earlier than the Clovis first hypothesis, depending on mutation rate. Genetic studies of ancient and present Native American mitochondrial DNA reveal more. They also prove first people's ancestors were isolated before diversifying. The molecular clock linked this isolated era to the LGM's peak 21,000 to 20,000 years ago based on DNA mutation rates. The approaching ice forced humans and animals to seek refuge worldwide. As the Pacific ice sheet withdrew 17,000 years ago, a potential coastal route in the Americas arose, allowing lineages to diversify quicker as they moved across geographic areas and sought each other less often to spread new genetic variants. Geneticists used archaeological and meteorological data to build a three-stage model for America's last generation's population. Asians colonized Beringia 20,000 years ago. They created the Americas' fundamental traditions alone over millennia. Around 17,000 to 16,000 years ago, they left Beringia and quickly colonized the Americas. Beringian immigrants later populated the Arctic. Indigenous peoples of the Americas had genetic diversity due to local evolutionary processes and no gene flow from other groups. The Beringian standstill or Beringian incubation theory uses mitochondrial DNA. Rather than traveling on foot, the first peoples most likely traveled to the Americas by boat along Alaska's west coast. Genetic data from ancestral Native Americans, as a population that split off from other populations about 21,000 years ago, supports this. The Paleo-Inuit around 5,000 years ago and the ancestors of modern Inuit between 1,000 and 750 years ago were two major migrations caused by the melting of glaciers. New data from White Sands, New Mexico, presented at the 2022 Society for American Archaeology meeting, challenged conventional migration ideas by indicating that humans may have arrived as early as 23,000 to 21,000 years ago. Genetic evidence does not support a trans-Pacific migration from Southeast Asia. Whole genomes indicated the shared ancestry of some South American and Australasian people Australia, Melanesia, and Southeast Asia. Geneticists call this ancestry Epikivera population or Population Y. Population Y is detected dispersed inconsistently in genomes throughout the Amazonian and Pacific coastal regions. It has been found in South American genomes as early as 10,000 years ago. What could account for this pattern? It's one of the biggest mysteries currently in the business. A simple hypothesis for a trans-Pacific migration from Southeast Asia does not match genetic findings. Population I ancestry is too old, sparse, and inconsistent to explain by this scenario, therefore such a migration would leave very distinct genetic footprints. However, a 40,000-year-old Chinese Tianyuan cave specimen bears the population Y genetic marker, probably a former population that gave origin to Australasians and population I. How did population I enter America? Two scenarios emerge from present data. First, population Y may have been in the isolated group that formed the first people's branches during the LGM. For example, a geographically separated metapopulation of numerous groups residing in different refugia across Beringia, 
could have had some families with this ancestry that were not widely shared due to restricted interaction. Population I may have been limited to select descendant populations if these groups invaded the Americas separately after 17,000 years ago. Population Y and archaeological evidence at White Sands may be linked. Could there have been two migrations into the Americas, one pre-LGM of population Wuli and maybe unsampled population A or other populations, and one post-LGM? This would harmonize genetic data and archaeological evidence of early human traces in the Americas. Archaeologists skeptical of White Sands' early dates doubt the second option, which is speculative. We need many more genetic and archaeological evidence to test it. As I type, we are actively gathering that data as a field. We may never know how the White Sands people fit into American biology. Members of the Pueblo of Acoma near White Sands know these people. Extinct megafauna at the site are even maimed in their language. The Pueblo of Acoma is recovering and studying these old footprints, demonstrating how archaeology is improving. More ancient genomes from indigenous communities spanning time and geography will reveal fascinating data about the early American people's lives, choices, and movements. Recently sequenced Brazilian genomes reveal South American migrations. Excited to learn about the past from the future. I predict that anything my field finds will simply confirm what indigenous peoples already know. They have been here forever. Love exploring the mysteries of our past? Subscribe now and hit the bell icon to never miss an update on the latest discoveries and untold stories from history.